Okay, so this is the end of the load method. Now, the last thing we want to do is parse the weights element. Okay. Um, now, similar to what happened up here with the layer size and the transfer function arrays, um, I'm going to need to dimension them at the same time. Um, so, since I already have code to do that up in the constructor, let's go liberate that. Um, uh, right here. So, for the weights, well, I'm going to need to dimension them. And then I'm going to need to, that's right here. Uh, and then I'm going to need to initialize the weights. And the only real difference, right, is instead of getting this random Gaussian right here, I'm going to load a value from XML. Uh, and same thing here. Okay? So let's take this whole piece. All right. So from start dimensioning arrays, right? This is where I set the transfer function before. Essentially, I want this whole block all the way down to initializing the weights. Okay, copy that. Uh, let's collapse that. Go back to our load method and put it right here. Okay, so these already exist. This will start to dimension them. I've already fetched layer count from the parameters. I can go through here and this does all of the dirty work for us. And that awesome, right? Just created the whole thing. Only thing I got to do is replace these. So when I'm fetching weights, recall what we're going to want to do, we're going to, we're done with parameters. We're going to go neural network slash weights and then slash layer by index for each one of those. We're going to go by node, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So within this loop for layers, let's just set the base path here to be neural network slash uh, weights slash layer um, and I want to select the layer that has an index attribute with value l dot to string plus okay close that up slash I think that's where I want to end it yeah okay so so far, right, for this layer, this base path gets me all the way to the specific layer node I'm concerned with. Let's say layer one. Uh, that gets me all the way down here to right here. Okay. Now I'm going to go through each node in this layer by index, grab the bias, and that's going to go and replace this guy right here when I'm fetching the bias. Oh, I'm sorry, this guy right here when I'm fetching the bias. And then I'm going to go all the way into each axon and fetch the weight. Okay, so let's do that. Now this is where I'm going to use um, uh, the node path. So node path is a string I defined earlier, and it's going to equal the following. So node. Um, that has index attribute with a value uh, j to string plus uh, close that and um, so that gets me to the particular node that I'm looking for and what I'd like to select is the uh, bias attribute okay now, the I guess I could just replace this directly. So the bias of LJ, instead of being random, should be, yeah, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway. So value, which we defined earlier, is going to be a double this time. Try parse x path value of base path plus node path. Oh shoot, I did it again. Can't 
set that equal to anything. I want to try and parse this value. Neural network weights layer with index L, node with index J, bias attribute, and parse that string into um, our value double. And that should now hold the appropriate bias to set here like that. Okay, sorry I did that again. So that'll fetch all of the biases. Now for this guy, right, I'm going to, now I'm going to, instead of using this node path, I'm going to look at, so the node with index J, and I want to look at axon with index equal to I to string and we're going to close that up just like that. All right. So that will pick out the specific axon node that we want, right? Connecting um, this layer's node J, right? Node J to the previous layer axon node I, right? Like that. So there's our node path, um, double dot try parse x path value again base path plus um, what is it node path so whatever is in there let's try and stuff that into our value which is a double and now we're going to set the weight equal to value All right so that should do it let's get rid of that Okay, so part of the reason I'm doing it this X pathway is this should specifically pick out the node that I want, um, no matter what order these accidentally perhaps could have gotten shuffled around into. Um, if you're handwriting XML uh, that defines a network or if you're generating it from somewhere else, then that way, Regardless of use of what order it's actually written in the XML, I will always pick out the correct value based on the structure. Okay, so that's why I'm going to go with XPath. So let's go test this. Oh, but first, what I want to do is add a new constructor. Okay, because in the case where I'm building one like this, I may not want to specify all this junk beforehand, I'd like to fetch it from a file. So let's create a new public backpropagation network. Um, and this time it's going to be string file path. Okay. Also what I'm going to do is add a new um, private boolean called loaded and by default it will be true. Okay. Oh, sorry. Private bool loaded equals true. And what that's going to do is just be a flag that's set when I actually have data loaded. Okay. So it's true by default for when I can call it from our default random constructor. Um, so clearly it's loaded. I just built it and it doesn't do anything. Um, let's set loaded equal to false at the beginning here, loaded equals true here. In between, what I want to do is load um, file path. And that's it. That should load that file, assuming that's something meaningful. Um, and that is it. Now, really, I this loaded false load loaded equals true thing doesn't do anything. Um, but what I would really have that I didn't do here is I would make this, let's say, a bool that would uh, return true if the load was successful uh, based on a more error checking, et cetera, et cetera, in the load method. But for the sake of argument, let's just say that's all it takes. Okay, so now let's go back to our program. So what I did here is I created this backpropagation network. This is random, right? Um, I told it what I wanted. I had it train and then I had it save. 
So to see if it worked, let's create another backpropagation network, call it VPN2. And it's going to be a new backpropagation network. And I want it to load from this XML, right? So this should give me a carbon copy of whatever I just created here. Now to tell what happened, let's go ahead and copy some of this code. Okay, run, paste that there. Iteration doesn't apply. Input, change this back to zero. Output, parameter one. Error doesn't apply. So that can go input zero, output zero, error, just like that. That doesn't make a difference. And I want to run this on BPN2. Okay, I hope that all made sense. <laughs> I could have just typed that out, would have been simpler. So what should happen is I should uh, instantiate this new backpropagation network with this parameter, which means it should know, oh, this is an XML, um, and create the new network, load all the weights and biases. To see if it worked, I'm gonna run it using the exact same input, which I just trained on and saved into this XML. Um, and I'm gonna stuff the output into output. And so what I should see is a final line. Let's prefix this with test so we can tell it apart. That shows the input and the output that should be identical to the output from uh, this network. Okay, so let's hit F5 and see what happens. Uh, okay, so what happened there was um, there was a problem with my X path here, and it was my fault. If you go back into the load and go look at the bias, you should see this, right? When I initialize the weights, I set the node path equal to node slash and then close bracket uh, at index equals apostrophe blah blah blah. Um, this slash shouldn't be here. Uh, what I want is the node with attribute named index of this value and I want the attribute node bias uh, from there. Now since I copied and pasted it's also going to appear here and I made one other mistake up here earlier. Uh, for the triparse on our enumerate, so this is actually all the way back into the first video. Um, I accidentally am trying to parse the X path, which is just this <laughs> right here, instead of trying to parse the value of the X path. So there should be an X path value here, which wraps our X path string like that. Okay, so let's try this now. All right, so there you go. Um, this is all of our iterations from the first one. Based on input number one, we were able to quickly get an output of two and a half for it. Um, and it stayed that way. We could have just stopped. Now this is our test key, right? What I did is just loaded um, all of the values that we should have saved to our XML, which are these values right here. And um, loaded them up into a new backpropagation network and printed it out right here with string test given the input one which is what we supplied and trained on we certainly hope we get the same output 2.5 which is the exact same as what we get up here so that is that um, so what I'll do is I will include this XML that you see right here I will copy and paste this either directly or indirectly into the description for this video um, and that way you can try and load this up and uh, plug in the value of one, see if you get two and a half out, and if so, you are good to go. So for the time being, that will pretty much wrap up our uh, backpropagation network class. Um, sorry about the mistakes here, this is kind of a complicated method. Um, so let's go ahead and close that, let's close that, close our methods, close my data, and close my constructors and that's it um, so somewhere down the line we will create a training class which will batch train these things on big data sets and um, we can do something actually useful with them 
So stay tuned.